Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Glory of God the Father. 
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possession was his own. But they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles born witnesses to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no need, need person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to the need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is of the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which 
the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the lord has this been done it is wonderful in our eyes this is the day the lord has made let us be glad and rejoice in it give thanks to the lord for he is good his love is A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. He said to them, Peace be with you. 
When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have come to believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The one who is begotten of God conquers the world. Think about those words. Good evening. It's good to be with you all on this Divine Mercy Vigil. The one who is begotten of God conquers the world. During this proclamation, and I'm going to call it that this evening, of this homily, I want you to contemplate the light of Christ, the begotten of God, the light that comes forth from his heart, from St. Faustina and her descriptions, the visions and instructions that our Lord gave her, and the artist that produced the icon and statuary and sacramentals of this great and most holy Sunday, the light of blood, precious blood, and precious water that gave birth to the church, the light that conquers the world. Over the last week, during this Easter week, I've been preaching on one of the renditions of the resurrection of Jesus, John, of course. I would say to you that it would be a good exercise on your part, I've done it once again this week, to read all Gospels, all four, their proclamation of the resurrection of Jesus. They're all different, but there's some similarities. It's inexhaustible. It's absolutely exhilarating as well to read the descriptions is to embrace the power of God's 
light fully. The culmination of his salvific rescue mission of humanity, which began with Abraham, chapter 12 of Genesis, his call to come out of Ur of the Chaldeans. What an incredible exercise it is. And you realize that John's rendition has a characteristic. I talked about this last Sunday in the English overflow masses that we had in the parish hall. I did both of those last Sunday. The characteristic of a progression of God's light, which is found in that chapter. We read the end of it today for Divine Mercy Sunday. The chapter is, well, it begins with Mary Magdalene going to the tomb in the dark. It was still dark. That description's there. Don't miss it. That and its descriptions going through this particular gospel rendition, John's gospel of the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter, has brought many, many, many myriads to faith. I mentioned the author Graham Greene last week. I had learned from Bishop Barron, and I'm a fan of Graham Greene, his great piece, he wrote many things. The Power and the Glory, what an incredible book that is. Written in 1940, I read it in college. That book brought the priest that brought me into the faith, into the faith. It's apostolic almost, it's the story of the persecution of Catholics in Mexico in the 1920s and 1930s, the age of St. Miguel Pro, and how the state was trying to destroy the church. The state had become Marxist and anti-Catholic and began to cancel, I'll use that word because we use it today, it's happening today, the rights of individuals, politicians were getting rid of their opponents. We see that today. God help us. We have indeed sent Miguel Pro, who didn't even get a trial when he was apprehended, and it was the cost of their lives, these priests who were executed for saying mass. He used to dress up in disguises and go through and take care of the parishioners throughout that part of Mexico. They apprehended him. And he stood in front of the firing squad in a cruciform pose. And they shot him and shot him again and killed him without benefit of due process or anything else. Graham Greene came to faith because of chapter 20 of John's Gospel. He's a convert. He had trouble after that, though. He, he struggled with his faith off and on his entire life, but he, he was converted. That chapter, that chapter gives us that progression of light. Mary Magdalene arrives at the tomb and there it is still dark, and just as you can count on the sun coming up the next morning, you and I can count on it, that it will come up tomorrow morning, God begins to enlighten, illuminate, enlighten her heart. The body's no longer there. The tomb is empty. She runs to John and Peter, and you know the rest of the details. And the chapter goes on and you see this incredible illumination of hearts. You see the power 
of God's love in what he had done, raising Jesus from death, taking what was literally a symbol of Roman Empire power and corruption, the cross. You see, the cross without Christ is nothing but death. There's nothing beyond it. And it's, a, it's an incredible symbol of Roman power, state power. And they used it to control the population. We can do you in. That's what states that are out of control do. Tyrannical states. All through history we see it. But God took that instrument of death and he had his son out of perfect love for you and I, all of us. And he was nailed to that cross and our sins with him, all of our sins, for all of us. And he died. But it didn't end there, did it? John's gospel and the others proclaim readily the very heart of our faith. The church is not a club, folks. It's about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The risen Lord. God overcame evil. And the very essence of evil itself, death. And he delivers us from it in his son's resurrection. And he gives that to us. And he wants to take our hearts, which are in darkness... You know, the truth is that we are, all of us, we're addicted to the darkness in our unredeemed state. We have a culture right now, and many of us are tempted by it, to, I call it, burrow into the darkness. Just as the apostles and disciples did in today's gospel, locked behind closed doors, terrified. Some scholars say they were terrified that they would be arrested, just as Jesus was arrested. Some more enlightened scholars, I believe, <laughs> describe and interpret the hermeneutic there is very simple. They were ashamed. They didn't get it yet. And Jesus came to them as they hid from him, as they had burrowed into the darkness, as we all do. Our culture is burrowing into the darkness, continuing to put all of its marbles in the cross without Jesus, in the cross which represents corrupt power. Jesus came to them, and he said, Shalom, peace, peace be with you, peace. As they're cowered in that room, you can see the expressions would be the same expressions you and I would have as we're cowering in the darkness. We don't understand. And he showed them his hands and his side, the wounds. And it's the wounds that God gives us the benefit of forgiveness, the message which is the eternal message of God's, the center of God's truth is his forgiveness, his divine mercy. I've heard mercy or divine mercy defined this way, that God's mercy, whenever it encounters evil, that is to say, his mercy, his love, when it encounters evil, it always overcomes it. Always. None of us can get to a place to where God cannot get to us. You may say to yourself, I'm the lowliest of sinners. God, there's no hope for me. That's a lie. 
It's a total lie. The light is shining brightly. And God wants to take our darkened, cold, burrowed hearts. And they tend to be hard, you know. Remember Pharaoh's hardness of heart? We suffer from the same thing. And he gives us the opportunity to present ourselves without excuse. Boy, we like to make excuses, don't we? My sins are because of everybody else. It's not because of me. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's this particular event's fault. Whatever it might be, we make excuse after excuse. But if we present ourselves fully in honesty with our sins, he shows us his wounds. That's what confession's all about. That's what reconciliation is all about. And then he begins to illuminate our hearts with the light coming from his heart. And he feeds us with the sacraments and his truth. And he begins to adorn our hearts with his light. And we do what, it, what, what Colossians calls for as we move forward, as we begin to realize this is life-changing God's divine mercy, the Easter event culminating in divine mercy Sunday. What do we have before us is the opportunity to embrace God's full truth, his full forgiveness, his perfect love. Those are the characteristics or ornaments that he wants to decorate our illumined hearts with and with those illumined hearts he gives us literally the endurance to get through this fallen world to get through it that's a miracle in and of itself people say God doesn't answer my prayers you want to bet now he may not heal you of that particular malady but he gives all of us the endurance of forgiveness. And we stop burrowing, don't we? If we're courageous enough, if we're trusting enough, if we have humility, if we embrace God's truth and his love, and we get out of the way of ourselves, we stop burrowing. And we begin to step out of the tomb that we're in. And God rolls away the stone and we walk out. And we become like those first century Christians that are described in today's lesson from the Acts of the Apostles, St. Luke, who's the author of Acts. I mean, if you read that, that, this lesson, you realize these people, you don't even know they're under persecution. And they are. They're under persecution by the state. They're being hunted down. But look at the joy they have because they know and they realize, they realize that nothing can stop God, that he's given us the endurance, and we can endure through anything. We can even endure through the nonsense that's going on today in our own culture, the wokeness and all of the corrupt politics and everything that goes along with it, we can move forward. And the church is strengthened by our illumined hearts when we pray and we join the first, Christian, uh, the, the first century Christians and ask for their prayers because we're where they were. Let us make a good showing of it. Let us embrace the light. The light, it's everything. The resurrection is everything. It changes everything for us. Nothing's the same. There's nothing to be afraid of. God has answered our prayers. Stop saying that he doesn't answer your prayers. That's an offensive to God. Let us embrace him with a heart that he can adorn and decorate and bring ultimately fully into his kingdom. May God have mercy on all of us, and he does.
And through his mercy, through his love, he overcomes all evil. And that includes all of our sins. God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us bring our prayers before the Lord who knows our every need. For the Holy Father, all bishops and clergy may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all that have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the faithful departed may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As together we support the 2024 Diocesan Service Fund in our parish and throughout the Archdiocese, may the Holy Spirit remind us, as St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans, that we are the Lord's. We are called to support the ministry of our local church in his name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, may they rest in eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom, including David Feltman. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for all the intentions that we have, the special intentions of this Mass, especially remembering Chuck and Florence Ugawini on the birthday blessing that God will bestow upon them, and for Roy Escobedo, especially for his healing, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Father, you sent your Son not to condemn the world, but to save it. We ask you to hear the prayers we offer for ourselves and for the needs of the world through Christ our Lord. The second collection is for the Diocesan Service Fund. Please be generous. Let 
protection be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. That Easter day with joy was bright, the sun shone out with Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim holy holy indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <coughs> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
mindfully protection, mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. When receiving Holy Communion in your hands, please consume the host immediately in front of the minister, or you may choose to receive the host on the tongue. Kindly refrain from walking back to your pew with the Blessed Sacrament in your hands. If you are not Catholic or you are not receiving Holy Communion, you may choose to join the line and cross your arms before the minister for a blessing. Thank you. The body of Christ. 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 That night the apostles met in fear. The body of Christ. Amidst them came their Lord most dear. And said, my peace be on all here. The body of Christ. Alleluia. The body of Christ. Alleluia. Body of Christ. Thou art my Lord and God, body he of 
Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Bless Lord, as I serve all the days of your life. The body of Christ. 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 Godhead here in hiding, whom I do adore. Mask by these bare shadows, shape and nothing more. See, Lord, at thy service, all lies here a heart. Lost, all lost in Touching, tasting, are in thee deceived. Thou says, trusty hearing, that shall be believed. What God so
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for several announcements. Our parish uh, bazaar will be held May 4th and 5th, Saturday and Sunday. We need donations to make this a successful bazaar and volunteers to run events on the day of the bazaar. Please visit our webpage for more information and purchase tickets, raffle tickets for a chance to win the 2024 Nissan Ultima car. Also, you are invited to come to the next traditional Latin Mass, Monday, April 8th at 7 p.m. The Vocation Ministry at St. Bartholomew would like to invite all parishioners to participate in the upcoming Uplift Your Priests campaign from April 8th to the 19th to show your support for our priests through offering prayers, spiritual bouquets, and kind words. You can find other ideas on the Vocation Ministry's page of the website. The first ever Catholic Blueprint Conference will be held at Moody Gardens in Galveston on April 26th to the 28th. This one-of-a-kind weekend will feature task talks from international speakers such as Abby Johnson, Gabriel Gastillo, and Father David Michael Moses, along with mass adoration, a youth track, and activities for all ages. You can find more information at fullnessoftruth.org. Our parish will be hosting the Sancti Sanctitisma First Marian Conference in Spanish. The event is organized by the Hispanic Continuum of the Legion of Mary and will take place on Saturday, May 11th. And for more information and registration, please visit our website. If you have suggestions, praises, or complaints, please share them with the Pastoral Council by submitting them to the suggestion box at the church's narthex. We recommend you promote your business in our church bulletin. The contact number for placing paid ads is in the back of the bulletin. Keep in mind that we distribute over 2,000 bulletins every weekend. Also, please sign up for the messages from St. Bartholomew Church if you haven't done all so already, and just simply text the word FOREVER to 84576. Again, take out your phone if you wish, and text the word FOREVER to 84576. And that concludes the announcements. Thank you, Deacon. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, 
by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world singing their own souls. 